Hi guys, good morning. Uh, it's Tuesday the 5th of November. Remember, remember the 5th of November. <laughs> Hope everyone is, is doing well. We'll have a quick look over the, the charts, how we uh, come into position to, to where we're trading today. And we'll have a, a quick look over the, the headlines as well that are shaping up the, the rest of the session before having a look at the calendar uh, as there are some uh, points to be aware of this morning and into the afternoon uh, as well. Just having a, a quick look over at markets, you can see stocks higher again. Uh, been off the desk for a couple of days. Thankfully, I didn't go to uh, Japan. Congratulations to South Africa on what was a wonderful performance. Um, obviously, Saturday morning watching that was uh, was a hard one to take, but fair play, great win. Uh, so I came uh, off the desk around uh, sort of four or five o'clock Thursday evening afternoon and, and since then stocks have uh, have recovered we broke obviously above that trend channel you can see on friday uh, helped by uh, i guess the goldilocks situation of non-farm payrolls uh, and pushed higher and, and since then we've had a, a decent push on and of course looking for targets now it's going to be relatively difficult uh, to be probably looking to get recent highs and see if there is any trends that come up or fib extensions as well i know people will be uh, looking at but higher on, on trade optimism will come on to one of the the stories from overnight and, and it has been relatively quiet I would say on the uh, the headline front uh, to, to keep an eye on so uh, much of the same I would say uh, as before is, is how I would, would focus on things stocks yes they mostly in the green uh, here just having a look at uh, let me just bring that into picture there uh, the the S&P 500 obviously the big guys there uh, having a, a positive day and uh, we are just up for the day on the electronic market so far uh, elsewhere let's have a, a quick look over what the pound is doing uh, coming in we can see uh, it did push lower yesterday but so did the euro uh, as well because uh, they're both coming under a bit of pressure a couple of headlines regarding the, the general election but again nothing substantial yet we know we break up on we break up parliament breaks up on wednesday and that's really where i would say it's going to start kicking on from so the pound down but nothing major uh, i would say in in terms of new developments to to keep an eye on uh, one story from uh, overnight that we'll we'll go over and have a look on the chart now is the the aussie dollar so you've got a couple reasons why we're, we're higher this morning i'm just going to put this onto the 15 minute uh, chart here you can see 3.30 UK time was when the, the RBA were uh, delivering their, their rate decision, which they decided to keep rates on hold. The key points uh, going for, from this decision is, well, having they have already cut three times this year, and they're now likely to hold to at least February. Uh, the RBA assessed the economy as little changed in recent months. Uh, and you can see since then the, the Aussie dollar has pushed higher. But one reason there, uh, a bit of an unwind of some dovish bets which are priced in around 10 percent and the other reason being that the trade war optimism uh, has helped push the, the aussie dollar higher of course with that correlation with australia uh, and china so the aussie dollar which again with euro and pound came a bit lower yesterday on what must have been some nice dollar strength uh, you can see has recovered slightly uh, this morning to almost up to those highs so good move in the aussie on the unwind of dovish bets keeping rates on hold not looking to cut until next year and trade optimism uh, as well quick look over at gold let's have a, a quick look here which you can see drifted lower yesterday uh, on on that dollar strength and of course stocks pushing higher as well 1505 a key level to to the downside to keep an eye on uh, which was the low from friday uh, and also uh, just briefly touch that uh, now as well 1485 really key level uh, that we hit um, on on the 30th on Wednesday uh, and a decent push to the upside. So yeah, summary of RBA, keeping rates on hold um, and business as usual it seems in, in sort of the wait and see approach now which seems to be the, the main point across all central uh, banks. Main headline that's keeping stocks elevated uh, overnight, trade optimism uh, continuing. Uh, as the Trump administration officials are debating whether to remove some tariffs on China, uh, Chinese goods as concession to seal the partial deal that will pause the trade war as early as this month. So, of course, we had penciled in the November the 17th uh, 
uh, meeting in Chile. That's obviously off the cards, so uh, because of the political uh, unrest there, um, the next uh, place for this meeting to happen is still being decided. US uh, highlighted one of those places and, and, and Hawaii, but the optimism continuing. Uh, according to five people briefed uh, on the discussions of the uh, dropping of these tariffs. The White House is considering rolling back levies on $112 billion of Chinese imports, including clothing, appliances, uh, and flat screen monitors that were in introduced at 15% back at the beginning of September on the 1st. Uh, and this move would meet a core demand from Beijing as negotiators from the world's two largest economies work out their terms of a ceasefire to be signed in the coming weeks by Trump and Xi Jinping. So positive on that. We also had from the uh, the weekend as well, Wilbur Ross optimistic on US-China trade talk. So a lot of the chatter over the weekend and you know, I was keeping an eye on, on Twitter and uh, a couple of the headlines and it was mostly positive, uh, at least being taken that way anyway. So for now, trade talks seem good. Uh, a trade deal is look, looking likely to, to have part of that signed by uh, this month. Uh, obviously, we've just started now, so there's, there's still time for things to change. Uh, I guess on the, the flip side, you've got uh, people that are believing Trump is, is using up some leverage here and giving in, uh, of course, as we come into the election uh, now, um, just a, a year away, has he shot his load too soon? Uh, on the leverage front, uh, we'll have to wait and see there. But going into this morning, looking at the charts again, uh, the way to, to take it is stocks are good, trade optimism, uh, the main driving force there, that helping the Aussie dollar after they've uh, kept rates uh, on hold and the unwind of those dovish bets. Gold uh, and T notes uh, just coming under pressure because of the safe haven flow. Uh, and if we just bring the yen in uh, as well, you can see that confirmed here. Uh, so very much uh, a morning for uh, risk on in the market, which continued from yesterday morning as well. So how are we going to see an unwind of that? Well, if these trade talks uh, take a turn for the worse, uh, I'd still think perhaps if there is no meeting scheduled in soon, that will start to be a worry. But at the moment, everything is, is deemed all fine and dandy. Uh, going forward. Having a look at the, the calendar, is there anything here that could potentially uh, move the, the equities lower? Because of course we're in a bit of a Goldilocks scenario. Data at the back end of last week, not great. Uh, and this is going to keep the Fed somewhat accommodative going forward. Uh, so in the afternoon, US-wise, we've got market services PMI and, and composite uh, PMI, but both final readings, so not expecting too much in the way of movement there. Uh, that's 2.45. 3 o'clock, this could have some uh, movement. The ISM non-manufacturing PMI from October. Uh, so that will be the, the possibility for a slight bit of movement. 3 o'clock uh, for the US uh, stock markets and, of course, any of the final earnings, which overall have been pretty good, uh, has to be said. So what is going to stop stocks, it seems, uh, for now? And unless we were to have some really strong data or uh, the trade talks to take a turn for the worse, it seems like the only way for now uh, is up. Just while we're on the the data calendar, I just realised I didn't have it uh, changed there. So there's just the 2:45 and 3 o'clock. Just while we're on the uh, the data calendar, might as well have a, a quick run through. You've got the the market services PMI, and we know this is the the main one for for the UK to focus on. That coming in expected at 49.3. Uh, just where would that put us? pretty much unchanged from the last month and we haven't had a, a reading above 50 since August uh, so that would provide a bit of a, a relief for, for the UK if we were to get above there as has been the case with UK data uh, even though this is one of the more important ones of course Brexit is going to be uh, the main driver uh, and at the moment the uh, general election coming up will take more uh, of, a, of a move on markets but certainly short-term volatility if we were to have a really strong number, and here you're talking more towards 51.5 or uh, a multi-year low number below 48, I wouldn't be expecting to see too uh, much. Overnight, well, from yesterday, uh, Johnson and Corbyn trade 
Brexit barbs as UK election heats up. Um, not enough really to take from here to to provide a, a direction on the pound. Really, it was just a case of the dollar was a bit stronger yesterday, and, and the euro and pound and the Aussie and the yen all came under a bit of pressure. And uh, now we're just seeing a bit of an unwind uh, on on that. Uh, so here, we, this was more. Uh, you might have seen it in the on Twitter on the Twitter sphere yesterday. Uh, Johnson writing an open letter to Corbyn demanding to to see what exactly is he doing uh, for the general election. What is his um, uh, agenda going forward uh, and then on the flip side Corbyn uh, attacking Johnson saying how uh, he is hijacking Brexit to pursue, pursue an agenda of cutting workers rights and increasing the role of US companies in the NHS. Uh, the build up obviously starting Wednesday for those five weeks I mean this is it's going to start I guess to, to get more more ugly as we go forward to be expected it's UK politics um, in terms of movement on the market I would say that is likely to, to happen as we go past Wednesday and then we start looking at polls and any real key changes uh, is Farage going to stand or is he not of course he said he's not going to after failing to uh, make a seat in I think it was seven attempts uh, or whatever but they're going to run uh, a candidate, candidate in all constituencies there so well, we'll see what Brexit Party can do to the value uh, of the pound. If they were to make steps forward uh, and take some of the, the shine away from the, the Conservative lead at the moment, then, of course, the pound should well uh, come down on the, on the fears of, of a current Conservative majority turning into the minority or, uh, or even a flip round. There's more uncertainty there. Uh, but for now, I would say Brexit, you know, let's, let's wait and see what happens for uh, tomorrow. Uh, onwards general elections they break up and start really vamping up the the rhetoric trade talks all good going back to uh, the, the calendar here uh, the building up of, of the day and how I'd be you know looking at it is if I'm trading the pound really from from nine o'clock I'm just sort of unwinding any positions waiting for this this data to come out European numbers you got out at 10 o'clock as well so similar sort of thing and just before that data release just waiting uh, to see how these numbers come out. The, the European producer price, both the month on month and year on year figures from September, so limited reaction expected there. There was limited reaction from Christine Lagarde yesterday, pretty much a, a non-event as well. So really going into today, it's pretty quiet. A couple of data points of note to be aware of, but not, um, not much has changed, we say, overnight. Having a, a look as well for the rest of the week, if we go over to Wednesday, obviously the UK Parliament dissolving. Uh, again, there's not really much driver this week. I wouldn't be looking to go chase markets really um, in, in terms of off single events. Uh, Thursday brings in the, the Bank of England rate decision. Yes, the, the, the quarterly inflation report will uh, provide some uh, opportunity perhaps, but they're not going to do anything uh, while Brexit uncertainty and general election uncertainty are still still rife and of course uh, Carney is off on the 31st of January as well uh, as we may be uh, with Brexit. Friday you've got uh, the RBA monetary policy statement overnight, Chinese data but it's relatively quiet uh, data front week so this may help stocks just continue that gradual grind higher which we know uh, they do love um, when things are uh, all fine and dandy and we're just getting those 0.5% uh, moves each day. It could be uh, that we're in for, for that uh, unless trade talks turn worse or, uh, or we have some really strong US data. But these points that we're looking from from here, unless we're getting that from the ISM non-manufacturing, really, um, that's, uh, that's the only big opportunity to, to perhaps change the, the US dollar off a of data uh, release. Quick look over the charts as a whole from today opportunity wise levels to be aware of certainly just looking at the pound here we're testing the original low of yesterday afternoon before that breakthrough so you would expect some uh, resistance around here double bottom from the, the low of the day uh, keeping a, a watch on those previous lows from the last couple of weeks if we were to have any negative headlines or a poor multi-year low then these could well come into play uh, to the upside uh, 
Uh, you can see it moved quite nicely yesterday when we have broken these support levels. I mean, look at that. Really lovely retest uh, around midday. And uh, the S1 off a good opportunity a couple of times, as did the S2 on the classics there. So some good opportunities yesterday. And those will be levels today that I'd be focusing on. In terms of looking to go short there, uh, if we were to push higher, just be wary of, of how we get there because, of course, we've just made now this trend um, from the high that we had in the afternoon of the 1st on Friday, uh, then the morning of the 4th and literally to the tick just now. Uh, so we're really key and well-respected trend line. So a break of that could be a change of the trend and actually these shorts now don't look as uh, attractive while there still would definitely be. Um, profit targets. Looking over at the euro, similar move. I mean, it looks pretty much the same uh, market in terms of where we just found resistance now, the original low from yesterday. So we're keeping a watch on that. Just above where we're trading as well, uh, you've got the previous low of yesterday morning. That would be another point to, to have marked up. Really, you could call this a, a three day triple top on the euro, just starting to top out perhaps. There. It's been on a decent run for the whole month, it has to be said, of, of October. Decent push um, and just couldn't quite get above 112 uh, on the futures, confirming a break there. But for now, uh, we are below. Um, levels to be aware of to, to the downside, that triple bottom. This is a very key range now, it has to be said, for the euro with those lows and those highs going back obviously a few weeks. Just drag that over. No harm, medium term anyway, waiting for uh, a bigger move to see what can happen. Having a look at the, the S&P, of course, the all-important trend channel is going to be uh, your, your guide here. While things are probably expecting just to grind higher on this lower volume uh, of the trend, just being aware if we do come down for whatever reason, a key break which we've had above here is the all important line in the sand so below that then it can start to, to push lower fine uh, you can see that's the initial uh, hold of that we broke lower uh, it offered a great opportunity to, to come in on the untested level the 13th of September failure on both of those days to close below and, and we had pushed higher since then I do actually believe if we on these days let me just circle this up close below that level I, I do believe now we, we could be quite a lot lower just the way markets work and the psychology now of being above that trend channel which came in around 30 50 you can see we got uh, a nice 30 points uh, higher above there so for me that's the the key line in the sand looking at a 60 minute be looking at any of these previous highs as well from uh, the days this week to offer a level of support uh, going forward we have perhaps just created a bit of a uh, a pennant here just starting to get squeezed in but you know much the muchness at the moment relatively quiet uh, out there as well gold you can see just before we put the pivots on here having a nice area of support be keeping a, a watch on that as well getting squeezed in from the the upside um, on that dollar strength that we had from yesterday key level around 1505 that's where I'll be focusing on to, to the downside of close of the hour maybe below there could open up the door back towards 1500 uh, handle s1 s2 sorry and the previous high from the 31st really key level just like the euro on on those three days to struggling to get back above 15 16 uh, as well so a bit of a mini range to uh, be aware of looking over at oil decent move yesterday uh, and of course from friday as well we're now back above some of those levels uh, or almost, I should say, we did yesterday get back above uh, the high that we had from the, the 27th. However, we have just closed below there in $57 handle. Keeping an, a, a watch here, it's a bit of a, a messy level, it has to be said, but the previous high from, from Friday, we broke through there yesterday, support there last night, had a little go, yes, a couple of times this morning, but 56.38 is holding well. So to the downside, that would be my level to, to keep a watch on. To the upside, just below 57 at 56.92 uh, as well. Any questions as usual, please uh, do uh, let me know. Overall, in a summary, RBA rates unchanged. Unwind with dovish bets are pushed higher uh, with trade optimism boosting that. Stocks higher on that front. The pound, not really any new developments. The speaker uh, is confirmed. 
uh, but that's not really going to drive price right now. With the Parliament being dissolved Wednesday, that's when I would expect things to pick up. Just out the corner of my eye, I might as well bring in this chart to, to wrap things up. This is Bitcoin um, here, which at 7 o'clock was trading at 9,382. Uh, and then a few minutes later was trading at 8,357. So uh, I've said this before and I'll say it again, I'll take those 0.5% ranges uh, in the S&P uh, over a 10.8% move downside to then go 11% to the upside. Crazy. Any questions to uh, let us know. I'm expecting a relatively quiet day. Um, but uh, headline risk, of course, is there with trade and Brexit. Hope you'll have a, a good trading day, and I'll catch you all in the chat.